right. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another round of coffee and questions. And what we're going to talk about today is how I built this patio overhang. Now, I know Justin up the hills building one. Thought I'd throw out a few tips, maybe a couple things that you should consider if you're going to build something like this onto, you know, onto the side of your house like I did. And I'll go over it kind of quickly. I'll just give you some tips on you know what I did. When you look at this right here in the picture, what you're going to see is you're gonna see, hey, that doesn't look like pine, that doesn't look like Douglas fir. It's not, I treated it. I treated it with preserva wood, and I'm gonna show you that in detail in a few minutes. And I did it for a reason. I put a coat on there, I waited 24, 48 hours, I put a second coat, and this stuff will repel water like you wouldn't believe. It just beads, it rolls right off. So this entire project was coated with the stuff and I bought it out at Lowe's. Let me change the picture. We'll have a brief discussion on each aspect of this build. Okay, so what we started off with here is we framed it, but I want you to take a close look. Look at the, uh, the roof. It's made out of a corrugated aluminum. I'm gonna show you a close up of that in a little bit on the video, and it's sheeted with tech shield. And I got that from Lowe's. Now the lumber itself, I didn't. I got it from a lumber yard because I paid a little bit more for it, but they delivered it for free. It's all good quality, straight lumber. It's not twisted, it's not warped. Perfectly good, nice lumber. And it was a great thing to work with. I mean, not having to worry about compensating for twists and bends and stuff. So this is what it looked like when I'm done. It secures to the side of the house. I'll show you pictures in a minute of how I did the ledger board and what we did. And then it goes over to the other side like you see here in the picture with those three four by four posts. And I'll show you how I secured them to the wall. Now you're also going to see I have a couple of like hangers up here because when I was done I had some 2x4s left over but I didn't want to leave them laying around and let them get damaged. I want them to stay dry, straight as possible. So I thought well I'll utilize the space up there you know where these joists are and I'll put these hangers on there and I'll just stack the 2x4s up there and they stay nice and dry and up and out of the way. Let me change the picture. We'll keep talking here about how I did this build. Okay, so the first picture up here is I wanted to show you that preserva wood that I used out from out at Lowe's. I think it's about $30 or something like that for a gallon of it. I got that Durham's uh, wood putty. I didn't really have to use it on anything. It's just on the shelf. But the preserva wood comes in different tints. It's a penetrating oil stain and sealer. I got it in Tahoe Teak. So when I go back to the other pictures, you, somebody asked me in the forum, well, what color you know gave you this golden brown or this light golden brown? Well, I just took a shot at it. Tahoe Teak seemed to you know be the nice color, so I just went ahead and picked that out, and I used it. 48 hours, 24, 48 hours between coats, I put two coats. The first one is going to kind of soak into the wood, and you leave it alone, let it dry real well. I would suggest about 48 hours, and it kind of locks itself in. Then the second coat, you know, you're starting to build a film on top or you're starting to build another layer. I shouldn't say a film, but you're building another layer and it doesn't just keep soaking in. And after two coats, um, I dump some stain on accident on one part of the wood and it just beads and rolls right off. And so I threw water on it playing around and again, it beads and rolls off. So I feel the product's a damn good product. So I went ahead and used it and coated everything on this patio project. And I have not been unhappy about it. It's been a fantastic product. Okay, next picture. Now, I'm gonna caution you about something. I mean, and I'll show you a picture in a little bit. I put this under the existing, you know, roof line where the joists is coming off and you've got that fascia board. I put it under there and I didn't put this on correctly at first. I had made a mistake. We put this on and then about probably halfway through putting this long ledger board on because it spans the entire wall. We realized or I did that. Wait a minute. On top of this, I'm going to put that thick tech shield and on top of that, I'm going to put, you know, the aluminum corrugated, uh, you know, roofing material. And I did take into consideration, you know, the corrugated roofing material. I didn't take into consideration that I had bought the thicker panels, you know, of this tech shield. And I thought, oh, crap. So I went and remeasured it and I realized, okay, unbolt it. Let's drop it down. But when you put the ledger board up there and um, we snapped a line, you know, a chalk line, but you can use a pencil or something measure remeasure triple measure make sure you're right so you don't make the same mistake i did and have to take it back down but 
once we did that and we had marked along this wall where the studs were, you know, I just drilled a hole and then I used a Forestner bit at first and then I switched over to a spade bit because it was faster and I drilled in just a little ways and it creates like a countersink. Then I put a lag bolt with a washer on it. I put them in there. We tapped it in with a hammer a couple of times and we tightened it up. Now, when I did this, I mean, I went in with the drill bit at first into the lumber when we were holding it up there and it was level. We had a level on it and I knew it was through the wood. I switched over. I had two cordless drills to a masonry bit, went through the stucco. I could feel it hit the wood, backed it out, took the lag bolt with the washer, put it up there. And I had an air ratchet hooked up to, you know, my compressor. Now, you know, you can use an impact driver. You can use a hand ratchet with a socket. I mean, you know, you can do this any way you want, depending on the tools that you have. And we started securing this onto the wall and creating that ledger board. Then we put joist hangers on there and I put them on this side and I put them on the other side. And I'll show you a picture in a minute. What was nice is once we had this thing the way we wanted it, and you want to create a pitch to it so that you've got good water runoff. So going from here underneath of the roof to the other side, you know, we had a nice little pitch. And what became easy is once we cut these, uh, these two by sixes, we just dropped them in there, nailed it off. And I thought, wow, now it's really coming together. You start feeling good. You start being real happy about the project. I did not skimp on materials when I did this. So I use joist hangers. I use good bolts. I use steel screws. And I'll mention that again as we go. Let me change the picture and keep talking to you about the rest of how I built this. Okay, now this is a close up of the tech shield radiant barrier and the foil part of this at first I thought, oh, it goes up and the guy out there goes, no, it goes down. And what it will do is it will keep the underneath side of that area cooler than normal and it will keep it warmer than normal, you know, during colder months and stuff like that. And I thought, well, and I got a really good price on it. It was on sale and I got the thicker, I forgot the exact thickness, but I got the thicker sheets and I went ahead and I used it and it's turned out to be a good product. This is a close up of it and you just nail it on like you would any sheeting when you're sheeting the top of something. And then over that, I put the aluminum corrugation and I'll show you that here in a sec. On the opposite side now was going against, you know, the property line wall and it's topped or it's capped rather with these red bricks and it wasn't going to fit right. And I wasn't sure at first what to do. And then I put a two by four there and then I put the four by four back up against it, and I thought, wow, this works perfect. So I found where the studs were because this is a framed wall and I marked them. And again, I drilled a hole. We held the two by four in place. I put the four by four in place. I had a buddy of mine holding it. I drilled through both with a long drill bit till I hit the stucco, switched over to the other cordless, went with the masonry bit into it till I hit the stud, backed it out. And then I used the spade bit and I drilled in a little ways because I wanted to countersink these bolts in there. It just looks better. You don't have to do it, but I thought it looked better. I'm not in a rush to build this. So I thought, what the heck? And it worked perfectly fine. I just needed a spade bit a little bit bigger than the washer. And then, like I said, with the air ratchet, I went ahead and I secured them right into the wall. Now there's about three of these on each one of these posts, but the posts on the bottom, the post holders that attach to the concrete, I'm going to show you because I bought these. They cost me a few dollars more. It wasn't that much more expensive, but I want to show you the benefit of using something a little bit different. Let me change the picture. Okay, so I put the picture over this picture to show you that as that post came down, I used a different kind of a bracket to secure to the concrete. This has a raised base. And the reason for that, when I was reading, is if you're in an area where it can be constantly wanting to get wet or water's coming by it, and I thought I might because the driveway slopes a little bit, and I don't want this thing constantly getting wet because nothing is 100% waterproof, but I'll take the added precaution. I think it was another $2 and 75 cents and I'm not going to use that many more of them. I bought the ones with the raised bases for the additional waterproofing. Now I could have bolted through the side like you see in that picture over here on the far right. I decided not to. I just nailed it off with framing nails and then I went straight through the four by four, two by four and into the wall with a lag bolt and I tightened it up and there's three of them in each one of these posts and I have three posts that span this wall 
and I'll show you in a little bit better picture in a sec. And it was more than secure. When I was done, this thing was rock solid. Let me show you a picture of how I countersunk those holes. All right, here we go. Now this is kind of comical because I blew this thing up beyond belief. But you can see here where I originally drilled a hole, call it a pilot hole or whatever you want, all the way through the lumber. I came back, I used that spade bit, I went in a little ways, I pulled it out, and then I went ahead and I used my anchor bolt with my washer, and I set it in there, and then I just went ahead and I ratcheted it on down nice and tight. But this is what it looked like. I just thought I'd show you that real close-up view, I guess. So let's move on, and uh, I'll show you some other things that I did. All right, so I put two pictures together here, and one of the things was is regarding the shelving. I want everything out in the open, uh, especially in this big, airy, you know, patio cover. I want things nice and open because of woodworking and dust and stuff like that. It was just easier to clean up, blow everything off with my blow gun. Everything is cleaned up in minutes. I mean, and it's not in an enclosed area. It's nice. It's airy. It's open. It's fun to work out in that kind of an area. So the shelving. Okay. So I took that tech shield, what was left over. And I just made shelves, nothing fancy or anything like that. And when it came to the brackets, if you look over here on my far right, you can see where I made these out of some simple metal and some railroad ties. I just heated them up, bent them, welded them, and I started to use them. But then I had to go out to Lowe's for something. And over here on the left, you're going to see these brushed kind of uh, nickel kind of shelf brackets. They were on sale for five dollars a pair, and I thought, you know what? At two fifty a piece, uh, it's outside. It's a patio thing. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do it because it was faster. I got all my shelves up in a matter of like hours. I mean, just from using these pine strips and just go ahead and securing them to it, and then using that tech shield leftover stuff, and I created the shelves. I'll show you a better picture here in a sec, but it worked out good, and they were on sale. Like I said, so I went ahead and did it that way okay so let's talk about the roofing for a minute so i told you about that ledger board mishap where i should have measured it a bunch of times i didn't we had to take it down um, i had to remark it re-level it reposition it and we kind of had to do that part over which really pissed me off but uh, nobody to blame but myself for not taking everything into consideration this is the final product that finally how it turned out more than happy with it and here you got that corrugated roofing going across. Now, I know right here in a couple of the places it looks like, you know, the seam is lifting a little bit. It's really not. The way that these things are secured is under these overlaps, you use self-tapping, uh, they're like roofing screws, and they have a rubber washer on them. I paid a little bit more to buy these, but the rubber washer waterproofs them, so you don't got to go over them with silicone or do anything like that and i've had a whole bunch of rains now and this thing does not leak i mean it is it's fantastic but the corrugated aluminum sheets um i forgot how much they were but it works fantastically as a diy person i mean to get up there and set this stuff on and you know just kind of zap it down on top of that tech shield and I didn't have to hire a roofer i didn't have to go through any of these roofing systems i mean this was something you can do yourself it's a patio cover. It's great during the summer. It's nice even during the winter or when it's raining because you can, this massive area to be under to continue working without worrying about the rain. And it's nice and open. So, I mean, you can really enjoy the environment around you, you know, while you're out there playing around. Let me show you a couple more pictures and then I'll talk to you about the workbench and I'll give you some tips and we'll wrap this up. Okay, so here it is, like I'm standing back a little ways and I'm shooting it on. Like I said, I know it looks like it's lifting up. It's really not. It's not going to go anywhere, you know, with those kind of self-tapping uh, roofing screws that I told you about. You can buy them at any, you know, like lumber store or anything like that if you ask for them. I don't know if Lowe's or Home Depot really carries them, but they're great. I mean, you put them in, you know, you have like a hex head. You put them in the end of your, you know, your cordless uh, drill and I mean... And I had a pouch, I just zap, 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 and I thought, this is great. I mean, you can just fly right along through it, secures the heck out of them, waterproofs them. But this, anyway, this is the final picture here, and you can see where it overhangs a little bit, and my neighbor loves this because when it rains, it rolls off down and it drips into those bougainvillea bushes and it waters her plants. 
And it also, because it's open and airy, it creates, I still have that gap along that wall that you saw, but the bushes are there. I just got to keep them trimmed on my side and the, the neighbor doesn't mind it and I don't mind doing the trimming, but this is it right here. Now let's switch over and let's talk about that bench. Uh, okay, before we talk about the bench, I'm sorry, there's one more thing I wanted to show you. In this picture right here, it shows you the underneath side, but on the opposite wall. And you can see where we got the 4 by 4 the 4 by 4 posts going up. I've got the fascia board that goes across. I got the joist hangers. So we got joist hangers on both sides. So when we cut this lumber, we had two ladders. A friend of mine, I just walked up, set them right on into those joist hangers, nailed them off. And we just went very quickly right on down the line, you know, with all these joists. And then of course, you know, you take a look here uh, along the top and you're gonna see where those four by four posts are. I joined them to the fascia board and to that joist both. So, like I said, I wasn't in a hurry. I was using steel screws, I mean, for this whole thing. Could you use drywall screws? Maybe, I don't like them, they're kind of brittle. I use good quality steel screws and I mean, we really secured this thing. It's built like a battleship. It's so nice and strong. I mean, I was so glad the way it turned out because I didn't take any shortcuts on the materials. Middle post, you'll see Benny the Buzzard here. Justin gave me that. Um, I keep Benny up there. He keeps an eye on everything. And I got that old school bell. You can see that lumber rack over here, you know, to the left, I stack firewood in there and you know cutoffs and you got that cat with his black ears you know him and his buddy up there sleeping those are my strays that hang around outside let's talk about that workbench and uh we'll wrap this up the workbench is going to be interesting because of the way that i did it i just wanted to share it with everybody okay so let's spend a few minutes talking about this because to most people this just looks like some just funky old bench and actually these posts down here, they're about three and a half inches wide, so I guess you'd call them four by, and they are about five and a half to five and three quarters wide, so four by sixes. And the way that I did this is I made a, a nice big routed wooden sign for the building supply place because I kind of like their logo. I took it down to them. I didn't ask them for anything, and then I was telling them I'm gonna build this big workbench, and I had in my head what I wanted to do, and he goes, hey, why don't you go out where the cutoffs are? He goes, we just, for a contractor, did a whole bunch of cutting. And there's a lot of like beams out there. See if there's anything you can use and you can have it. And we appreciate you doing the sign for us. Okay, so I went out there and I got these. And I had plenty of leftover two by fours. So you see there's one, two, three, four, five posts all the way down. It spans the whole wall on the outside of the house and it's got five on the inside. And then I framed it with two by fours, but the part that you don't see, I've got like small joists or ribs that go across it for added stability going all the way down underneath of this on the top. Then I sheeted it uh, or put plywood across the top of a three quarter inch, real thick. And then I went ahead and I coated this whole thing with the preserva wood, everything, um, two coats. Then I created the bottom shelf and with the leftover tech shield, I went ahead and I created this storage base, which right now has got blankets and stuff down there for the stray cats. I used all steel screws on this thing. I mean, it is built rock solid. I didn't even have to secure it to the wall, which I thought about doing. But when I was done, this thing with its weight and everything else, it's not going anywhere. So I didn't even secure it to the wall but it sits up against there nice and flush. And as you look up, you see where I came down with just uh, some cheap pine from out at Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever. And I made those vertical pieces where the shelf brackets are. I used that tech shield, like I said. I created these huge long shelves because I wanted everything out in the open. I was happy with, with the way that this turned out because everything's open, it's airy. I see everything, it's not hidden in cabinets. A uh, little messy right now. This was a very fun project to be truthful with you because it's simplistic in design, but I built it the way that I wanted to using steel screws, good material, good straight lumber. I put preserva wood on it like I'm saying. You can use whatever product you want. I'm not trying to sell you on preserva wood, but you should put something on there. And um, it's a great project and I really love to have this much open bench space 
and it's still very open and airy so anyway this was a fun project i hope you got some ideas out of it some tips maybe i'm the home handyman i hope you click subscribe i hope you keep following me drop me a comment below if you've made something like this or you're going to you know what are your thoughts and ideas we all do things differently there's no right or wrong but i mean sometimes maybe something that somebody shares with you you can use to do your own thing I hope to see you on the next video. I hope you folks click subscribe. Thank you. Bye-bye.